All right. Well, hi, hello, and welcome to Unlock the Power of AI to Resolve IT Tickets with Ease. Now, today's exciting webinar is sponsored by Zscaler and produced by Actual Tech Media. My name is Jess Steinbach. I'm with Actual Tech Media, and I am so happy that I get to be your moderator for this conversation because I think this topic really hits home for a lot of us, right? Whether you are the person submitting the tickets, you're the person project managing the tickets, completing the tickets, or maybe you're managing the people who manage the tickets. <laughs> we are all invested in reducing the stress and increasing increasing the efficiency, right? And that's what we're here to talk about today. Together with the help of a top expert from Zscaler, we will explore how you can use AI to identify those issues faster, proactively resolve problems before they escalate or repeat, reduce alert fatigue, that's a big one, and increase insight and awareness. There is going to be something for everyone in this chat today. I know you will get a ton out of it, so we are going to get things rolling very quickly here. I do just want to go through a few housekeeping points before we get this show on the road. So let's start with your question section. Uh, this is where you can post your highs, you can post your hellos, you can post all of your insightful questions and feedback and thoughts and ideas as we go through our conversation with our expert presenter today. We are going to have teams here on live chat. We've also got teams answering questions. We're going to do a little Q&A at the end. We're going to follow up with you after we wrap. You are going to get so many answers to your questions today. So make sure you get those questions in in that questions window. Now we're going to give a little test run right now. Say hi, say hello, give us a little wave, say hi to the community out there with us today. Let us know how your day is going. Hi, Daniel. Hi, hi Morteza. Hi, Louise. Hey, Martin, Joe, Jim. We've got quite, quite a crew here with us today. And I'm excited to have all of you be a part of this conversation. Now, if you do have any tech issues today, if anything comes up for you at any point today, no problem at all. The first thing you're going to try is a browser refresh. I promise that will clear out almost all of the tech gremlins. So give a little browser refresh and I bet you will find that cures whatever ails you. But let's say that those tech gremlins have really got a hold of you today. No problem. You can post in that questions window and the actual tech media crew will be there to help you out. All right, the last thing I wanna point out on your audience console is that handouts tab. Now you wanna make sure that you spend some time exploring that handouts tab because there are some very cool resources, takeaways, follow-ups to our conversation today. So make sure you've got that downloaded, put that aside. Don't start reading it just yet because we've got a lot of info to cover, but you are going to want it when you uh, wrap up the webinar today and head out. You'll be very glad that you had those tabs open and ready after we go. All right, now, if all that cool content was not enough to get you pumped up for our day together. We also have a $250 Amazon gift card as a prize drawing at the end of our webinar. Now you do need to be here in live attendance in order to qualify to win that $250 Amazon gift card. And all winners must meet the actual tech media prize terms and conditions. If you are not sure what those terms and conditions are, no problem. We have the full T's and C's linked for you in the handouts tab. So head on over to that handouts tab, click in, scroll down, and you'll find the full T's and He's waiting for you there. All right. Well, that was it for all of the housekeeping. That means it is time to get this show on the road. And I am so excited to introduce you all to our expert presenter here with us today, Vikas Srivastava, Principal Product Specialist at Zscaler. Now, Vikas, I know you have so much in store for us, lots of great info, helpful insights, and we want to leave some time for questions at the end, so we got lots to do. I am very excited to get into this. I'll join you back for some Q&A shortly, but for now, I'm going to hand the mic right on over to you. Take it away, Vikas. Thank you, Jess. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, and thank you for taking time out for being with us here today. Uh, I know everybody's very busy. Uh, I'm Vikas Srivastava, and I have spent more than a decade working in the networking, security, and monitoring space. Uh, and throughout this session, we will be running a live Q&A. So please feel free to drop your questions in the chat panel. Now, from an agenda perspective, we will be uh, starting with a very quick overview of uh, what is ZDX, uh, where does it fit in, and then focus on uh, you know, what this session is for, focus on some of this recent AI-driven um, advancements which we have as a part of ZDX, which is going to help you, uh, your network teams and your IT and help desk teams to get to the root cause of issues um, faster and 
help reduce mean time to resolution for cases which are opened by your end users. Now, uh, let's get into a quick overview of ZDX. What is ZDX and where does it fit in? So an Acer survey finds that IT decision makers are increasingly in favor of hybrid working. So hybrid working is here to stay, right? And despite the pandemic driven tech spend surge, nine in 10 employees are still frustrated with the workplace technology. So it reveals that businesses globally are facing a potential uh, workplace crisis, if you will, damaging you know, uh, employee productivity uh, and ability to retain talent. Now, what, ma what makes matter even worse is point monitoring tools leave IT teams unprepared. So what I mean by that is there are tools which are focused on um, you know, monitoring the network. There are tools which are focused on uh, monitoring the endpoint. You know, there are tools which are focused on monitoring the application itself. Now, when a, when a problem happens, when an issue happens, the help desk IT teams are looking through these tools trying to collect data points and trying to manually correlate it more like in a firefighting mode after user complaints versus being proactive and detecting the issue quickly. Now, what makes, you know, you know, where does ZDX come comes into place, right? So ZDX is the same lightweight agent, you know, it's, it's a module which sits within your Zscaler client connector and provides IT teams with end-to-end -end visibility and performance metrics across users, their devices, their Wi-Fi performance, how is their ISP performing, the entire path the user is taking through the Zero Trust Exchange, uh, all the way to the destination application. We also bring in telemetry information with our ecosystem partners like Teams, Zoom, and WebEx and provide detailed insights into those meetings. You will be able to pinpoint what exactly is causing a poor meeting experience. Is it a specific hop which is causing a poor meeting experience? Is it the user's device uh, or is it the destination application? And on the top of that, we are collecting since we are collecting uh, all of these uh, you know, millions of data points uh, from your users' devices and from the network and the application, we run the AI-powered uh, data analysis, uh, the AI machine learning on the top of the data which we are collecting to pinpoint issues and bring that up to the surface so that you can find out uh, issues in your environment and also aid troubleshooting for your help desk. Now, this, all of this is basically uh, uh, helping your network operations team and your service test teams to reduce the time to detect an issue and time to resolve it. Now, to give you a very high 10,000 view of 10,000 foot view of what is ZDX architecture look like, like how, what, how does ZDX work, right? So ZDX, in this case, we are, we are going to take a look from the very top, top. Uh, you have the applications which you would like to monitor on the top. So, you know, Teams, Zoom, WebEx, Office, you name it. Any application which is there in your infrastructure, uh, on-prem, in the cloud, behind ZPA, Access Direct, doesn't matter. As long as it is reachable from your user, you can configure it to be monitored. Now, at the very bottom, you have the Zscaler Client Connector within which ZDX is a thin module, which runs these probes to test the performance of these devices, to test the performance of these applications. And all of these telemetry information is collected in the Zero Trust Exchange, uh, in, the, in the ZDX cloud in the Zero Trust Exchange. So all of the heavy lifting is happening on the, in the ZDX infrastructure, in the cloud, and not on the user's machine. Right? We don't want to impact the user's machine. So any calculation, any heavy lifting that's done uh, in the ZDX infrastructure. And of course, um, 
you have the apps and the network probes which you define uh, for you know what app do you want to be monitored what network uh, you know what network probe would um, go with the app probe and give you the network statistics and then you have uh, integration points like webhooks or integration with ServiceNow. We have a plugin for ServiceNow uh, and then integrations with call quality providers. So let's take a look at what are the different metrics we collect on a very high level, right? So again, ZDX uh, is, part, is, a, is a very thin module, which is part of your Zscaler client connector. The deployment is very straightforward. We will see that in a, in a quick slide on how we do that. But uh, from a ZDX perspective, we collect device metrics, as I mentioned before, like there are uh, you know, customers who have tools monitoring devices. There are different tools for monitor network and there are different tools to monitor the application. Let's see how does ZDX bridges that gap, right? So from a device perspective, we are collecting information like model, software information, version, patch information for the, for the device. We are collecting CPU, memory, process level details, battery information, Wi-Fi signal strength. Uh, trust me, whenever we are in these webinars and you know, meeting customers, there are a lot of times when customers bring this up that, hey, the user's working from home, they have a poor home Wi-Fi, uh, they open a case, and then it takes a long time to find out it was the Wi-Fi or the ISP, right? What are the top processes which are impacting the user's uh, endpoint performance, right? Uh, is there a certain uh, process which is consuming too much of a CPU impacting the user's performance? And then uh, we have, with our Intune integration, we bring in data from the Intune system as well, uh, like boot time, process crash level information, and all of that. Now, next, we are collecting network metrics, right? Uh, network metrics related to the Wi-Fi performance. How is the last mile ISP performing? What is your performance going through the, Z the Zero Trust Exchange, going through the Zscaler cloud? So you, will able, you, you are able to see, like, if you're migrating from, you know, any other legacy solution to Zscaler, like, what was your performance before and after? Right. We support multiple protocols for path detection. So not just ICMP, but TCP, UDP, and adaptive protocol, right? We provide hop by hop latency information so that you can pinpoint what exact path uh, is introducing too much latency, right? One important thing which I would like to call out here is whenever your traffic is going through a, a layer seven proxy, like you know, Zscaler in this case, your traditional monitoring tools fail at the front of, you know, just at the layer sun proxy, at the proxy level. You cannot see beyond that. And if you cannot see beyond that, then how can you measure end-to-end -end user experience when a user is going from the proxy to the destination application? So if you have uh, legacy network-based monitoring solutions, you will only see half the picture. Uh, and then, as I mentioned before, we have integrations with Zoom, Teams, and WebEx. So you have detailed metrics whenever a, a user is complaining about a certain meeting bad. You can go back in time, see what impacted the user performance on that meeting. And then finally, the application metrics, right? Very important. What is the pack parsing time? How much time did it take for the user's device to parse the pack, right? The, even in milliseconds, there is some time introduced. That counts. How is the DNS performing? You know, what is the TCP connect time? What was the time it took to do SSL handshake with, uh, you know, the zero trust exchange and, and further? What was the server response time? Was the application available, right? And then we bring all of these information and put them into three main buckets. You know, we assign them a score, we benchmark the data we collect using the web probe, uh, you know, the synthetic tests which we do. And we assign them a score. We baseline it good, bad, okay. Um, and there are a lot of details about how the scoring work, but the key takeaway, if you have to take it from this slide, is scoring 
is at the very core of ZDX. It is very different than other tools which, which rely on manual thresholds that, hey, if the network latency goes above 300 milliseconds or a certain parameter increases ab above this number, uh, create an alert, right? What ends up happening is you get inundated by these alerts uh, in, you know, and a lot of, lot of times those are uh, non-actionable alerts. And, you know, there may be a time when uh, that one of the hops on, on the internet is intentionally slowing down ICMP, you may get a false alert, right? This is where scoring comes into picture. We look at all of the metrics, all of the details, baseline it, and only send you alert based on uh, the configured ZDX score if you have configured alerts like that. So basically reducing alert fatigue uh, is the key point here. Now, as I have mentioned before, uh, ZDX is a part of your existing client connector. So once you enable uh, the ZDX module in the client connector portal, it shows up uh, in your ZCC deployment. As you probably know this, as I mentioned, the, the deployment is extremely straightforward. So you toggle a switch and the deployment starts. Another question which comes up more often is how much bandwidth is this module going to collect? right up uh, you know use how much memory and cpu is this uh, module going to use so we have benchmarked this and the process level uh, the process uh, cpu consumption for a zdx process itself is sub 1% unless it's working and it's it's sending some data it, it may spike up to 5% but then it is always less than 1 or 2% right and you will see once you have deployed ZDX or you're in your existing deployment, that how much process, how much memory or CPU does ZDX consume? So minimal CPU consumption uh, and you know the bandwidth consumption is around 30 to 40 megabytes for the entire day for all of the configured probes. We support um, Windows, Mac OS, Chrome OS, and Android uh, as the operating systems, which we run on today, right? So moving on, uh, we have over 5,000 customers who rely on ZDX. Some of them very huge. I worked with customers who have deployed ZDX on you know, more than 140,000 uh, of their endpoints uh, and they use uh, ZDX to steer them into the right direction that you know, where is this problem? Why is this problem happening? Because it gives them all of those data points in one single view, right? Um, now, with the time savings ZDX provide, right? Like bringing all of these metrics at one place with the AI driven root cause analysis, it also helps with saving costs for your organization. This example in here is a study which we did for a customer base of 45,000 users. And this was uh, the financial gain for them, uh, you know, I think it was uh, annually. So where do we go from here, right? Let's say you have IT teams, right? Think of this, uh, you know, pictureize this, you have your help desk and now they have ZDX, right? Uh, and today when they get a case, all right, they have data from a network perspective, application perspective, infrastructure perspective, device perspective, where do they go from here, right? Uh, and just as a reminder, a lot of times level one service desk associates, uh, you know, are great, have a fundamental understanding of a lot of the technologies, but not very deep understanding, right? So this is where uh, the AI driven root cause analysis, which we uh, developed comes into place. So what we have provided uh, for the IT admins, the ZDX admins is a button on the ZDX console where whenever a user opens a case or you're doing a normal troubleshooting, you see a dip in the score, the score goes into the, into the poor category. You can go in there um, and click on this analyze score button. And what it does is it's basically looking at all of those data points before and after and at the point where you clicked analyze score and 
look at those data points and find out what could be going wrong, right? Now, to give you an example, right? I mentioned we collect device metrics, CPU, battery, Wi-Fi, ISP information, uh, network telemetry information, application information. Now, with all of this, we brought the troubleshooting time down by ZDX itself from four hours, five hours, down to say 30 minutes. Now, how do we bring it further down for IT help desk? So when you click on this button, it looks at those data points and steers into, uh, into a direction that looks like uh, this could be a problem related to high DNS in this example or poor Wi-Fi, right? And if you have deployed the ServiceNow module, we have a ServiceNow module in the app ServiceNow app store, the IT help desk, gets all of these details within the ServiceNow incident, which can also be directly opened from ZDX. So when this, when the help desk gets the case, they can see all of those details pre-populated in that case and start uh, you know, troubleshooting right from there. Now, in this case, the help desk is seeing that uh, you know, there is a network latency uh, and they would like to escalate this case to the network team. This is important. The help desk looked at the issue and they know that this is a network issue and they can escalate it to the right team versus escalating to a completely different team, wasting a lot of precious time. Now, the ticket goes to the network team and the network team can start with more deep dive troubleshooting. They can compare what is the existing score look like and compare that with a last known good score and get a lot of telemetry points before and after and see what changed, right? In this example, uh, what the network team found out was this was an issue with an external proxy, which appeared to have a poorly configured DNS setting. So what we saw uh, so far was how can ZDX help IT help desk to reduce the time it takes for a ticket and route it to the right direction and help the end user fast. But how about using the same AI to help the end user directly, right? When a user is facing a problem with a local Wi-Fi or there is some problem with their desktop themselves consuming a lot of CPU and memory, why not help the user right there because we are running on their machine? So, as you know already, like we are running as a thin module uh, Z within the user's uh, Zscaler client connector. Now, we are seeing all of the data points, right, at the user's level. So, whenever there is an issue, like we detect a poor Wi-Fi signal, right, we can give the user a gentle nudge, a notification, that it looks like you're having an issue with your Wi-Fi, right? And further, we can also guide them that what can they do next? Maybe move closer to the Wi-Fi access point or maybe reboot the access point or, you know, probably both. Uh, and when this happens, uh, the admin also have the notification on their dashboard, in the ZDX dashboard, that how many users were uh, notified uh, what was their feedback and admins can for sure tune if they want to notify a certain group of users or not in their admin portal. Now, we also collect the user feedback if the notification helped them or not. Again, uh, as we go through this session, uh, please feel free to put your questions in the chat window uh, and we can answer that as we go through the session. Now, another new addition uh, in the AI-driven root cause analysis or the AI-driven umbrella is our intelligent detection of uh, a problem and, in, in, and using that intelligence in our alerts, right? So think about it, the traditional way of configuring an alert. So as I mentioned before, you define a threshold uh, and if that threshold is breached, you get an alert. And a lot of times that creates a ton of alerts which are not actionable, right? Now, with the 
dynamic alerts with intelligent alerts what you can do is you can tune you can create an alert and then you can assign it that what is the sensitivity level of this alert you know how sensitive are you to that change for or how sensitive are you to a zdx core change or how sensitive are you to a network change on on a network latency change so you can assign it a high low medium uh, you know you can select that uh, within your within the drop down and as we collect this data and as it change changes from the baseline based on the configured sensitivity we can trigger an alert or directly open a case within your service now deployment if you have deployed uh, the integration all right so to reiterate we saw how uh, zdx helps uh, with ai driven root cause analysis for help desk teams how it helps the end user themselves right with the notifications right we saw uh, the creation of uh, dynamic alerts and with all of that how about helping the network and the you know the security teams by finding out issues which are there in your infrastructure and this is where our incident dashboard comes in right so this is a relatively new feature uh, this is one of my personal favorite features so what incident dashboard does is even if you do not have any alert configured not saying you should not configure alerts but to give you a good understanding an incident dashboard works off the data we are seeing from your deployment of zdx right from your deployment of the zscaler a zero trust exchange and then we are collecting all of these telemetry points and looking at anomaly points in that data using our model so if there are a, a set of users in a, in a in a branch location or a headquarter location facing a wi-fi issue if a set of users working from a certain city are having uh, an isp issue you know if there's an issue with um, an application itself and not all of that but also let's say there's an issue with the zscaler zero trust exchange right not that it happens uh, very often but let's say there's an issue in a in a given geography with a specific uh, node right and the users impacted we would, uh, we are able to find those information and bubble that up in a dashboard so they can go and drill down on what were the incidents that have happened in your infrastructure and all the way down to the users who were impacted by <coughs> sorry all the way down to the users who were impacted by that incident right so in this case we have an a wi-fi incident which has happened uh, in a in a office network uh, what the user is seeing is when they come to the office and they're working in a certain department in the office location uh, you know certain floor they're facing poor connectivity drilling down we are also able to see what all users are impacted and then all the way down to what is the access point to which all of these problems can be correlated to and all of the other uh, you know individual metrics like signal strength bandwidth channel utilization and all of that details so to summarize right uh, today when when a case is open at a help desk there are multiple different signals which they get right like hey i am not able to access my email uh, my vpn doesn't work i have a poor wi-fi my network slow uh, I cannot access this app. What does your IT help desk team do, right? And multiply that problem where, you know, you have 10,000 employees or more, right? So a lot of times, again, um, as I mentioned during the session, these tickets uh, take a lot, a long time to resolution or if they are escalated or if they're routed to a di different department, uh, you know, they are a lot of times wrongly routed or in routed to an incorrect team. It just increases the mean time to resolution. Now imagine, uh, you know, with AI driven root cause analysis, when a ticket comes in, 
your IT help desk has all of the data they need in one place uh, with, you know, what is the user performance looking like and the drill down capabilities and the ability to run root cause analysis right from within the console and help the user, you know, um, with resolution or root cause analysis within minutes, right? Or escalate the case to the right department if, uh, you know, if that resolution is more complex and needs, uh, you know, a more experienced network or security team uh, involvement. So with all of this, the, the whole point is that we are getting all of these telemetry points, we are looking into all of this data, and we help uh, your IT teams, you know, your organization to resolve issues quickly, you know, and if there are uh, deep rooted issues like which uh, ex which impact a lot of users get to the root cause quickly help the AI driven root cause analysis feature uh, you know to to find out where exactly the problem was within a few minutes and then also help your users with self service you know guide them into the right direction right on their desktop with notifications that hey you, these are the steps you could take to resolve a certain problem and last but not the least with incident dashboard um, find out deep rooted issues in your infrastructure and give you the capability to drill down and go find out the impact and uh, do the root cause analysis so with all of that uh, thank you so much uh, you know, we have a lot of resources which should be there, uh, you know, in, in the panel here uh, regarding uh, all of the topics which we talked about. There are some great data sheets which talk about the cost saving and also some uh, data sheets which go deep into some of the features which we saw. So with that, uh, Jess, back to you. Awesome. All right. Perfect. Because we have a lot of questions coming in because so we've got a lot to dive into and I want to get into them. You know, I, I really appreciate in the presentation today that we got to do a little bit of the storytelling and then, you know, mm -hmm. got to see a little bit with the demo there. I, I think that what you're offering is is a great opportunity to sort of increase everybody's superpowers um, mm -hmm. and, and give you more ability and, and more information right at your fingertips while also reducing some of that fatigue. Uh, that I think a lot of folks are feeling in in IT and in any sort of ticket facing um, entity. So and team. Mm -hmm. So that, you know this is a really cool opportunity. Um, and I think there's definitely hitting a nerve with our audience today because the questions are flying. So are you ready to dive in? Let's let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So this is a good one, and, I, and we're going to start with this one because I think uh, you know we're just taking a step back into the integration of AI and and kind of understanding that fully. So can you explain what are the exact AI capabilities uh, and that that are actually a part of the Zscaler platform? Can we dig into that in a little bit greater detail? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, with ZDX, the AI capabilities uh, start with uh, you know your ZDX advanced uh, and higher subscription. And what they are doing basically uh, from a capability perspective is help at a user level. So if there's a user having issues, find root cause at a user level. And then all the way from that to an application level issue. And then, you know, all the way down to an organization level issue. So we have capabilities from the perspective of end user from the perspective of an application outage, from the perspective of an ISP issue. So all of those uh, issues can be found out using the current AI capabilities. And we are working on, uh, you know, extrapolating that and, you know, making it even covering even more base in the future. That is one thing I can definitely say I've seen from Zscaler is you, you guys don't stay still very long. You're constantly moving, constantly evolving. So there's new things coming all the time. And especially with AI, you know, that that is just such an ongoing evolution. Um, OK, I'm going to keep going with questions here because we've got lots more coming from the audience. Um, does ZDX monitor traffic that's going direct and not through the Zscaler Zero Trust Exchange? <laughs> that's a great question, Jess. And uh, trust me, it comes more often than not, right? So. <laughs> Uh, that's the, basically it's like yeah I do not have a my traffic isn't going through the zero trust exchange will I right. still get visibility through that yes so uh, irrespective of what traffic 
what path is your user taking to a destination application via zero trust exchange or direct or through zpa or say working from a coffee shop right we monitor the traffic irrespective of the path they take hmm. okay yeah. Nice and easy. That was a quick and easy answer. Okay, Absolutely. we're gonna keep rolling here. Um, where does ZDX pull the UCAS data for Teams, Zoom, and WebEx? Awesome, yeah. So uh, we have integrations with Teams, Zoom, and WebEx, mm -hmm. and um, we collect the data using APIs from uh, these providers, right? So we collect like meeting level details, was sharing going on in this meeting, uh, what was, uh, the, you know, what, who were the participants and all of that information, right? But what we add on to that data is a lot of other metrics, like what was the user's endpoint performance looking like? When the user was going to one of these meetings, right? They were hitting a specific um, media server in Teams, Zoom, or WebEx environment. What was the latency the user experienced while going to these uh you know uh, you know going on these meetings and uh you know what if there was a network slowness what hop impacted their performance so we collect the api metrics we collect using apis and then merge them together with the details which we see right hmm. and give the users the entire view of their meeting experience hmm. okay yeah. I like that. Um, you know, I got to throw one in here myself too, because I'm, I'm a little curious if you could offer any insight. We have a few folks in the audience that have expressed that they are needing to carry this forward to someone on their team that's going to be making the decisions about, you know, solutions and platforms to be adding mm -hmm. into the budget this year or next year or whenever they're getting to make these choices. So if you had to give any someone in the audience out there sort of that that uh, key ROI metric, what, what mm -hmm. would be the thing that would be the best argument to make? to a decision maker for why this is the solution, why, why they should invest in this. Yeah, absolutely, right? So a lot of times when we uh, you know, meet customers, mm -hmm. uh, they already have some tools to measure performance or look into you know, experience. And a lot of times, right? Sorry for the long way answer here. So a lot of times, right? Uh, these tools are, again, very network focused uh, or focusing on a certain aspect of the application delivery chain. Now, what the IT teams or you know, organizations are looking at is ensuring, first of all, that their end user experience is great, but mm -hmm. also you know, reduce cost with all of these different tools, right? So um, they would like to not have multiple agents sitting on the user's device for in the first place, right? So basically there's a consolidation component, which a lot of customers are interested in. Mm -hmm. And that's where they look into ZDX, like, all right, uh, you know, I can cut down three tools uh, and, uh, and replace it by one tool, right? And we have a lot of great resources on, on, on this, uh, you know, uh, on, on the same note uh, on our uh, ZDX page. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, please feel free to go there and look at the resources which we have posted there, right? Uh, and definitely reach out to your, uh, you know, your Zscaler rep, and we would love to talk to you more uh, about uh, these capabilities, right? You stole the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to ask you, what do we do to get started? And you already asked and answered that. You're such a pro at this, because Okay, well, since you've asked my, answered already my very last question for you, I, you know, I, I just want to make sure that I've, I've got this fully understood because we did get a few questions coming in about sort of what makes the ZDX AI-powered root cause analysis. What what makes that extremely unique? So do you think is that, you know, you know I think we've got that great cost savings element. What, what would you say is that one sort of standard out feature that would make you mm -hmm. the most unique yeah absolutely right so from a from a uniqueness perspective uh as you saw right like zdx is very uniquely positioned looking at the data points which we collect right if you remember right. uh the the metrics which i mentioned about uh the visibility through the zero trust exchange right mm -hmm. the uniqueness which we have from the perspective of uh call quality uh, data collection. You know, the synthetic test, which we do from a user perspective versus a vantage point perspective. So with all of this data, we have the data from uh, all of these segments like device, network, app, user. 
And since we can see all of these data points, the root cause analysis can leverage these data points and give the customers, the uh, you know, the admin teams a more accurate uh, resolution that this could be causing the problem. So I think uh, having that vast set of data uh, and the ability to run uh, at scale on that data is one of the you know the, the great points uh, about uh, ZDX AI uh, powered root cause analysis. Well, that's a lot of exciting stuff. There's definitely some cool takeaways here. And clearly there's lots more conversation to be had. I think we are getting pretty close to the end of time here. So we're going to wrap this up very quickly. You've given everyone a lot to think about, and you've also given us some good action steps, some ways to reach out to you. You know, I think if, if, anyone sort of sitting there and thinking this sounds really great and there's a lot of really wonderful uh, takeaways that they've gotten from this. Is there sort of something that you'd recommend if they're feeling a little overwhelmed in terms of taking that first step? I mean, is it is mm -hmm. it uh, reading an article, scheduling a demo? What what do you think is really the, the way to take step number one? Yeah, absolutely. So we would have some of the resources here uh, in the chat window. Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, on, on the ZDX portal, uh, we have a lot of trainings, you know, which are there, which the customers can use, right? Which they, we, they can use for uh, making them familiar with ZDX, right? They yeah. start from very foundation and take them to the next level. And uh, you can, you know, if you don't want to do that, reach out to your rep, you know, reach out to your account rep and uh, ask them that, hey, I would like to learn more. And maybe some of us will be there with you, you know explaining ZDX in more detail. You'd love to do that. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Well, I can say for me personally, because I hope I get to talk to you about this again very soon. And I'm sure everyone in the audience feels the same way. So I am sure you will get some follow-ups from this conversation. Uh, this has been so much fun. There is a lot to be, you know, to be had here, to be seen, to be explored, uh, and a really, really exciting conversation. So thank you so much for leading us through this. I, I hope we get to chat with you again soon. Yep. Thank you, Jess. And uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Okay, and we do have a prize giveaway that I'm going to get to in just a moment. But before I do, I want to remind you all, if you are looking for that first step, if you're looking for that way to follow up on our conversation while everything's still fresh and buzzy in your brain right now, head over to the Handouts tab and make sure you download those handouts. There's a service desk ebook on what's causing that ticket. It's a beginner's guide to troubleshooting devices, networks, and applications for service desk teams. So fun. You've got an artificial intelligence intelligence ebook from Zscaler, a great read all about how you can leverage AI and ML with ZDX, and an awesome data sheet. Nice and concise, easy to read, Zscaler digital experience, exploring how you can unlock that superior digital experience for your end users. That is what we're here to talk about today, right? So if you're looking for those follow-ups, you want to dig in a little bit deeper, make sure you've got those downloaded, hold on to them, and, uh, and take a little time with them after we wrap up, which is coming soon. But first, we have have a prize giveaway, a $250 Amazon gift card going to someone here live and present and obviously quite lucky at the webinar today. So today's winner of a $250 Amazon gift card is Thomas Zhang from Maryland. Thomas Zhang from Maryland. Congratulations to you, Thomas. As always, we will get in touch about claiming your prize after we wrap. And with that, on behalf of the Actual Tech Media team, I want to once again thank Zscaler for making this webinar possible, and especially to our incredible speaker here with us today, because you have given us so much to think about. That was such a great presentation. I loved a little bit of a demo, getting into the Q&A with you was just a blast. So all in all, a wonderful day, which of course brings me to all of you and my biggest high fives, all the gold stars to everyone here in the audience today who asked some really incredible questions, uh, really engaging conversation that we got to have, which is due in large part to all of you being here with us and joining in that. We really appreciate the time that you've all taken to come and be a part of this conversation today. I think we got to explore some really exciting ways that you could make a more efficient and effective ticketing system at your organization. And no matter what your role is on your team, I think we all understand how important that move is, how vital and valuable it can be to meeting our organizational goals. So this was a big day, a big conversation. I hope you're feeling kind of lit, lit up and brain buzzy as we head out about our days together. All right, well, I know that I've learned a ton from this session. I hope you all have as well. I cannot wait to see you all at a webinar again soon. And until then, have an absolutely beautiful rest of your day.